The Harsh Life of Sailors on Board a Spanish Galleon Today on Echoes Through Time Channel From the 16th to the 18th century, countless Spanish ships sailed the oceans, carrying goods, silver, and, above all, men from the New World to Europe, on a journey fraught with dangers. Thousands of people boarded these ships, sailors who made the sea their livelihood, men and women seeking new opportunities in the colonies to escape poverty, and religious men eager to tread on lands inhabited by pagans to convert them to Christianity. The Spanish Galleon was a ship with a tonnage of about 500 to 1,200 tons and a length of between 40 and 60 meters. The holds were usually filled with goods and food stored in barrels, casks, jugs, bundles, and crates. The rapid deterioration of some of the items stored in this dark and poorly ventilated space, including provisions, meant that the hold could not be used to accommodate passengers and crew. For this reason, life on board took place between the decks of the ship. A galleon of 550 tons could carry about 100 people in total. Of these, between 60 and 70 made up the crew, to which up to 30 passengers were added. Additionally, live animals' chickens, lambs, and cows were often transported to have reserves of fresh food. The crew of a galleon was organized hierarchically, from admirals, captains, pilots, and bosuns to sailors, cabin boys, and young pages. There were also carpenters, coopers, and caulkers, who sealed the ship's joints with oakum and tar to keep water out, as well as chaplains, stewards, and surgeons. Men of war were also present, especially infantry soldiers and gunners. The passengers were of various types, from officials and wealthy merchants, often accompanied by servants and family members, to scribes, doctors, lawyers, humble artisans, or women traveling with their children or alone to reunite with their husband already established overseas. After the cannon shot indicating departure, the sails were hoisted, and the heavy anchors lifted by capstan. The slow and heavy galleons set sail from Seville, the port of the Indies, towards the ocean. At that moment, cries were made for the success of the journey. Set the foresail in the name of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons and one true God, who be with us and grant us a safe journey and return us safely to our homes. At sea, if it was calm, passengers spent monotonous days observing sailors performing the tasks required for navigation. Swabbing the decks, repairing sail seams, operating bilge pumps, making hemp oakum for caulking, mending rigging, and tightening lines. Only meals broke the onboard routine. At dawn, the first of the two daily rations was given to the crew, consisting of a rather meager jug of wine, legumes, rice, flour, raisins, bacon, occasionally fish and salted meat, cheese, and honey. Vinegar was also provided to mix with water when it began to spoil. But the staple of the oceanic voyages diet was the biscuit, a kind of coarse flour bread or cracker baked twice. On countless occasions, sailors and passengers were forced to eat it in a putrid state, even full of worms. Food was prepared in a carefully watched stove to prevent fires. Once the food was ready, the young pages alerted everyone by loudly singing, Table set, food ready. Whoever does not say amen, let him not be given a drink. Table at a good hour. Whoever does not come, let him not eat. The captain, pilot, and bosun ate at a separate table along with the higher-ranking crew members, such as the barber, surgeon, steward, clergyman, and constable. The rest of the men sat as they could on the main deck, where they consumed the meager ration provided to them. After lunch, daily tasks resumed until dinner which, when provided, was taken before sunset. The harsh sailing conditions left little time for leisure. Besides, at any moment, a maneuver could require the help of all men with the rigging and sails. At sea, sailors and passengers had few distractions, playing, 
talking, and reading. Playing was the main entertainment for the sailors. Despite being prohibited, cards and dice were played openly on the decks, and sailors and passengers gambled money, weapons, and even trousers. Others might sing their ballads or tell their adventures. Sailors also fished, driven by the need to consume some fresh food. Crew members had to be very careful not to commit any crimes on board, as discipline was strictly maintained. The captain of the galleon knew that ensuring the success of the voyage required immediately suppressing any hint of insubordination. In fact, in case of disobedience by any expedition member, the captain was given the authority to punish him at your discretion with the penalties you see fit. Acts like swearing, blaspheming, stealing, playing cards, undressing, or engaging in illicit relations were considered crimes. Sanctions, defined by maritime traditions and the rules in the Book of the Consulate of the Sea, could range from the loss of wages and goods to flogging, imprisonment, exile upon arrival at port, and, in severe cases, execution. At nightfall, after the prayer, the crew sought the best possible spot to lay their mats and sleep, as beds were a luxury reserved for the captain, some officers, and distinguished passengers. While most slept, the galleon had to continue its journey, and the only activity on board was that of the men on night watch. These were divided into three shifts, the first called De Prima, followed by the De La Madura, and the third and final, Del Alba. The watch officer patrolled the ship to ensure everything was well secured, and that the vigilant crew did not fall asleep. Fires were extinguished to avoid risks, and the bilge was pumped out again. Silence took over the ship, accompanied by the creaking of the wood and the ropes, broken only by the prayer that the page in charge of the hourglass, the sand clock, recited each time he turned it. Good is the one that goes, better is the one that comes. One has passed, and in two grinds. More will grind if God wills. The watchful sailors had to respond with a prearranged phrase to show they were attentive. Oceanic voyages were never peaceful. Storms, leaks, shipwrecks, diseases, and pirate attacks threatened travelers at any moment, despite their daily prayers. The conquest and colonization of the New World and the Philippines exacted a high toll in human lives. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more.